Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd ayya la habita fillah As we know the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam ordered us to be one ummah and first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem wa ta'asimu bi habli lai jami'in wa la tafarraku and hold on all of you steadfast together and be to the rope of Allah and do not divide Ahabati fillah when we see the groups, the sects, and the political parties that divide us, it is shameful, and these are un-Islamic uh, activities. Ahabatu fillah, when we look at the concept of rebelling against the ruler, Ahl Sunnah has consensus about this being muharram, being impermissible. The ulama qadimin wa hadithin, the classical scholars and the scholars of today, from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. However, the youth still are infected with this madhab because, in fact, it's a madhab and a minhaj when you are afflicted and infected by the thought of the Khawarij because they were the one of the first sects in Islam and they rebelled against the Sahaba. They fought against the Sahaba. They made halal and lawful the blood of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And now what we have are groups and parties and sects that have the same mentality. Not only do they make takfir of all the Muslim rulers, they don't say there's, in, there's no exceptions to them. Anyone ruling is non-Muslim because they don't implement the Sharia either perfectly or how these people uh, conceive the Sharia to be implemented. Ahabat fillah this is quite a dangerous ideology and it's an ideology we have to be prepared to deal with and we have to also know it's not going to disappear no matter how much we fight it the head is like a, the heads of a hydra and they are multiple so when you cut off one head of the shayateen another head rises up as we see with the new groups and that are fighting and rebelling and attacking and causing folda around the world Imam al-Albani, rahmatullahi he mentioned about two categories of revolt. He said the ideological revolt, which is khuruj al-fikri, and this is the most dangerous of them. And the reason why, as the Imam said, because uh, the, the, the second type is the physical revolt, khuruj al-amali. And this is the fruit of the first category. And the habit of Allah, as far as tafsil and going into the details, We've, we spoke about it in many of our lectures. And there's a plethora of durus out there from the students of knowledge that's translated in English. I mean, that's in English and statements of the ulama. So this is not the time and the place to come with the amount of adilla. But I'll give you this. Go to Sahih Muslim, Kitab al-Imara, and this should be enough to cause the heart to uh, find a comfort and that this is impermissible. It's impermissible to go against the Muslim ruler. Now, we know the shibahat of the people, of those people who will say, well, none of them are Muslim. This is the afkar of Sayyid Qutb, because he revived in this time, as Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali pointed out, in his many treatises exposing this afkar, this, this, uh, this type of thought, this ideology, which stems from the Khawarij. But he took it to another level that even many of the Khawarij didn't do because the Khawarij, they believed in their own imams often, and they had various sects of the Khawarij as well. But what we see Habati Fillah with Sayyid Qutb in his afkar and his ideology is he began a type of uh, thought which made takfir of whole lands. And this was really not known to even the original Khawarij. And he has many statements, and you can go back to milestones, and I don't advise that you do, but you can go back to the many refutations that are out there, and, I'm, and there's plenty in English as well, that have been translated, which deal with uh, the doubts that he holds, but this ideology is so dangerous.
because it goes with our desires. We need someone to blame. We don't ever look to our own selves for the sins that we're doing and to say that we deserve the leaders that we get for those that are oppressive and those that, uh, those that are outside of the fold of Islam. Because no one is saying anyone who is in a Muslim country or is the leader of a Muslim country is, is a Muslim. No. But what we're trying to discourage is ignorance in making takfir. And we're trying to discourage making takfir at all and leaving it to those who are ahlan fi thalik. And that is the ulama, especially the major scholars. Why do we say the major scholars ahabit fi Allah? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says bi kitab al kareem, fasalah ali dhikr in kunzum la ta'alamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. And not all of the ulama are ahlan for making these kind of adjudications and making these kind of judgments, the judgments of takfir, these are very serious. And Ahabak Tifillah, why do we warn the people? Because the ulama warn the people against going with people like ISIS and groups like this. Now, for a tafsil on this group, I'm sure we'll receive more ban from the ulama. And some of the ulama have already spoken and warned against these, uh, these people. But I, I promise you, uh, if we look in the history of Islam, look at the time when Hajjaj bin Yusuf was killing the Sahaba, and some of the people went to Hassan al-Basri, and they asked, you know, should we rebel? Look at, he's killing Sahaba, he's killing, he's killing the Salihin, and they're much better than, than us. And he said, be patient. Be patient. The affair will become clear. Don't trust me. You're not missing anything. Don't get excited and hasty. I want to join these groups. I want to join the battle. I want to join this. Don't, don't, uh, don't waste your time and energy and your efforts like this. Work on correcting yourself. Supplicating for the truth. And you'll find that as the manzal of those tabi'een, like Hassan al-Basri, warn the people to be patient. It's the manzil of our scholars today. The manzil meaning that they have, they are the ones we turn our affairs to. We don't have anyone else. We don't have one Muslim leader to <coughs> rule over the Muslims. And we don't have, uh, and all we have are the scholars to go back for their knowledge and their ilm and their fadl and their hikmah and their basira and their insight. That's who we have to go back to. So it is for the best, your best interest, and the interest of the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam to go back to Ahli Dhikr. In kuntum ta'alamun. In kuntum la ta'alamun. If you don't know. And don't think you know when you have no knowledge. If you haven't studied. And I'm talking about studying. I'm not even talking about just being a talib al-ilm. But I'm talking about being from Ahli Dhikr. Being from the ulama. Because you don't have the right, nor you do you have the, the, in, the academic background to be able to educate and to be able to make rulings and understand the mufasid or the masalih, the, the harms and the benefits. So avoid these things like the plague, ahabit fillah And I encourage myself and I encourage our youth to not get a... If you get excited, then run to the ulama and begin to seek knowledge. Run and race to them. But don't race to Boko. Don't race to uh, 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 ISIL and ISIS. Don't race to uh, 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 these other groups and, and, and that have arisen in this time and age. Getting in conflicts you don't know anything about. It just feels good. And it sounds good. And yes, there's oppression. Yes, there's tyranny. Yes, there is uh, uh, Muslim suffering and harm being done. But do you want to add to that chaos? Or do you want to be a prohibitor of it? Do you want to be from Ahli Iman, Wasulh, the people who rectify? Or do you want to be the people who codify that chaos and fitna and continue to see the humiliation and blood of the Muslims and especially when people want the people in Syria they would they would like to just go to a restaurant they would like to have their children just being educated or not even getting to that stage just to be free from ducking from bullets all the time 
or to go back to their country, all the thousands and thousands of refugees. They'd like to see some stability. They'd like to see some uh, normal, uh, normalization of their life. So don't think that this is cowardice. Don't think that this is foolishness. But trust me, if you go and waste your time and your energy, you'll see. You'll see the result. And maybe you'll come to reflect. Maybe you won't. But the judgment is with Allah. So go back with Ahl Sunnah, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. The Prophet وسلم, said, La tazal taifatum min ummati zahirin al haq, hatta yati amr Allah, wa hum ala dhalik. The Prophet وسلم, said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth. No one will harm them who differs with them until the day of judgment. Imam Ahmed and other great imams and some of the, many of the salaf said, we don't know who they are except that it's Ahl Hadith. Who's Ahl Hadith? Are those, those people who are maiming and killing Muslims and making takfir judgments and going and declaiming that they're the Khalifa and leader of all the Muslims, negating all the authorities that are out there? To say that they're now the, the leaders. Are they Ahl Hadith? Are they fitting that prescription? Or is it the ulama who are patient, who study these messiah, who have the knowledge, who have the background, who have the training, and who are doing something because they are giving fatwa with ilm, with fiqh, with basira. And this is how you're going to strengthen your iman. This is how you're going to increase your practice. This is how you're going to have victory. And this is how you're going to have victory in the religion of Islam. And trust me, when, if you're patient and you follow this path, and it's a steep path because we all get excited. We all want a quick remedy. We all, it, all, it feels good. But that's not the solution. Ahabatibillah, avoid these groups and sects like the plague and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and learn your religion so you can have knowledge and basira to be able to see between haq and batal and not to get excited every time you see some, some new event because we're only beginning. There's more fitna to come. There's more crisis to come. The Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith of Hudayfa about that will we see uh, more fitna, will we see more, after good, will we see more evil? Yes, we will. So, Habitifillah, avoid this like the plague.